Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we are going to be making this really bright, vibrant tumbler. I will tell you, I had zero plan. <laughs> I did not know what I was going to do. I just wanted to use this vinyl. I had other plans for this tumbler. So it is spray painted, but to apply vinyl to a tumbler, and as long as it has a white back on it, just as this, you don't have to use a spray painted tumbler. You can put it directly on the stainless. I used my high-tech measuring system and just put that vinyl up to the tumbler and marked it off with my nail where the vinyl would fall over the edge and then trimmed that excess off. I peeled back a little bit of the vinyl and trimmed off a little slither of that backing so that once I line it up perfectly along the rim, I can push that backing down and then easily work my way around the tumbler. I want to leave a little bit of that stainless exposed so although this is spray painted again you don't have to do that but if you do make sure that you remove a little bit of that spray paint around the top of the rim so that you don't risk having to clean that later on or whenever you do trim the epoxy off of the rim of the tumbler it doesn't chip any of that paint and you leave yourself a really nice stainless seal around the top now you may already have some of this vinyl on hand. It is from my latest Britney bundle with Gracefully Created. All of them have been individually released, so you can grab that at gracefullycreatedccd.com and use code BRITTANY10 at checkout. Y'all know by now, if you have seen my prior tutorials, I am a huge fan of Gracefully Created. All of her colors are so vibrant, and even if I were to put an opal glitter on top of this these colors are going to shine through because they are so bright all right now once i made my way all the way around the tumbler i pressed that seam down really well and put a little strip of painter's tape on here normally i don't use this but for some reason i have been way off lately and if i try to cut this by myself it's going to be like extra crooked <laughs> so I'll, i've been giving myself a guide trim right down alongside your painter's tape and then remove the excess underneath like look i still have a little crooked spot but it's fine it's fine now listen i know i should have put a layer of epoxy in between my vinyl and my power wash okay i was feeling like living on the edge so here we are <laughs> I have my Dawn Power Wash and I am heavily spraying that around the top so that I do not get any spray paint around that top rim. And then I am basically just ombreing it down to the bottom. And then I grabbed my can of spray paint and very lightly sprayed a coat of that on. You don't want to go too heavy that you will get runs or it will puddle up whenever you wash your power wash off. And then I threw my can because I ran out of paint. <laughs> But I'm always throwing or pushing something in my tutorials. And then I took my water immediately and washed that off. I really wish that it would have went up a little bit further. But if I had put a layer of epoxy in between my vinyl and my power wash, then I would have been able to remove that with acetone and then do it over again to get the results that I really wanted with this. I'm using Blue Starlight from the latest PDB Creative Studio resin box. This mica is absolutely beautiful. Since this is part of a sold out resin box, it may not be available on the PDB Creative Studio website, but I will list some alternatives down for you below as well as the PDB Creative Studio group so that you can keep up with all the updates on the new releases and products added to their website in case this one makes an appearance. I really wanted to finish this one up quickly for y'all so I could get this tutorial out. So I did use Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio fast set. This epoxy dries incredibly fast Within 45 minutes, you can add an additional layer of epoxy, and then after an hour, it is touchable, which is incredible. So about three, I would say three to four hours after applying this layer, I was already ready to add on my decals 
and then add on my final layers all in the same day. So this cup, yes, it was made in one single day. And I wanted to give you a close up of that blue starlight. Just look at it, man, I am obsessed with this. All right, so let's make our decals. If you saw my Boss Babe Tumblr tutorial, then you already have this file. I did get it from Creative Fabrica and that will also be listed below. I do not need a full sheet of these, so I removed the additional layers and then I went over to my shapes, added in a square, and then I'm going to resize that to the size that I want to cut this. So that was 11 and a half by five inches. 11 and a half is the max that you can cut with the Cricut design space. I sent that image to the back and then put my leopard print on top. I highlighted both of them and then selected slice. Once that loaded, I removed all of those little extras and I was left with the exact size that I wanted to cut. I am using Artistry's Shape Tape because I'm going to be applying fulls over top of these spots. So I applied my Shape Tape onto a light grip cutting mat and then I used the Vinyl Plus setting to cut that out. And now for our image. Normally I wouldn't show this whole process but I have lots of questions on offsets and how to eliminate some of the cut lines for the print to cut feature. So I highlighted this and created a 0.05 offset. I changed that offset from print to cut to just cut and then I'm going to go over to my image and we're going to eliminate some of those really fine cut lines. So I am doing a 0.01 offset. It is teeny tiny but it is just enough to eliminate some of those extra fine lines that your Cricut machine will basically just eat up. So I did the 0.01 offset. I'm going to change it to white or whatever background that you want your image to have. Head up to your align and align that vertically and horizontally. Highlight both of them and then flatten the image. This is going to make it one and as you can see, it now has a very slight white offset and it is not gonna cut those teeny tiny little lines. Print that out and make sure that that toggle button that says bleed is on so that it will extend the boundaries of your color and cut perfectly. If you have any additional trouble with print and cut feature, I do have a tutorial for that. Just look back on my videos and hopefully that will give you some additional help. So for our shape tape, our leopard spots, I am just removing the background. And as you can see, it is a little tedious because this stuff is so super sticky, which is an excellent problem to have. But I removed all of the excess and then I'm just going in and removing that protective layer on top so we can add on our folds. The full color that I'm using is Ohana 5 from Southern Bell Glitter. I of course, we'll list that below as well as all of the other products that I used here. And I first just did a test spot to make sure that it was going to show exactly the way that I anticipated and it did. I did not want these to be super bold, but I wanted them to really shimmer in the light and they do just that. So to go more in depth on how to add the fulls to the shape tape, these fulls come in rolls and what I usually do to be able to work a little bit better is cut a strip of that off. You want the shiny side up, which is basically the transfer tape and the matte side facing down. Use something to scrub it down to get that really good adhesion and then remove that transfer tape and you will be left with your design. Okay, so after I made sure that those spots were gonna show up, I wanted to add on my decal so we could do sort of a spiral of them around the decal. So I grabbed my image and I'm just going to remove the background 
and it was about to rain so I went ahead and spray sealed this with the Rust-Oleum matte clear coat. You could use the glitter glue from Artistry as well to seal this. I have used that in my prior tutorials and while it was still wet I just removed the background, allowed that to dry and then I attempted to remove it from the backing, but that did not work so well. This image gave me quite a time trying to get it onto my tumbler. If you use transfer tape, you want to make sure that you remove a lot of the tackiness from it because you do not want it to pull up any of that image or any of your color. So what I ended up doing is just actually removing it by hand with no transfer tape from that backing and then applying it to my offset. This is not ideal, <laughs> but it's what I had to do to make it work. If I have already mentioned this, I'm sorry, but I did get this image from Etsy. So I will link that below for y'all, but I did ask Gracefully Created if this can be one of her decals that she carries in her shop. She said yes, of course, because she's amazing. And this will be a white decal, meaning that you can take the decal, has a clear background, but the image itself is white on the back. So it will show up on any surface and you can just pop that onto your tumbler. So her group will be linked down below. I'm not sure when that will be released, but it will be in the very near future. So definitely join so you can stay up to date on all of the images that she will be releasing in the future. Once I had that together, I did somewhat get it to <laughs> adhere to some transfer tape and I made sure that I was applying my image on the complete opposite side of the seam of the vinyl. I'm just OCD and I think that makes it look nice and clean if you are not completely covering up the seam with a decal or an image. And then I just went around in a spiral pattern with my little leopard spots. And now since we are using an opal and you can see through this, you want to make sure that your spots are pressed down really well. I learned my lesson when I did the burst coffee tumbler and I did not get the shape tape pressed down in the areas that I used the white glitter. So since you could see through the white glitter, it actually showed the spots underneath and you don't want that to happen. So make sure that your spots are pressed down really well. You don't have any air bubbles underneath them. If you were using some sort of full that you can see through. And an easy way for me to get a decent spiral and it not be all wonky around the back side of the tumbler is to start at the bottom and I go up in an angle. I only do a small portion and then I go to the top and do the same and then I put them together on the back side. I do the same exact thing when I am trying to spiral glitter or if I'm doing a Milky Way. It just gives myself a guide and makes it a lot easier to get that not straight because it is curving around, but make sure that it doesn't go kind of wonky on the back side.
Once I had all of my leopard spots on, I actually did go back in and spray seal this very lightly with Rust-Oleum Matte Clear Coat. I just didn't want any of that adhesive that is on the shape tape. If any of that was popping through my fools, I didn't want that to cause any issues. So just as a precaution, I sealed it. And then I added on one layer of Artistry's one-to-one -one ratio facet, and then lightly brushed over with a torch to grab any micro bubbles that might have been peeking through. This tumbler does still need a final coat, but I am loving how it turned out. As you can see, those spots show up so much more when you go out into the sunlight. It gives such a cool effect and I love how this turned out. Of course, all of the materials that I have used in this tutorial will be listed down in the description below. We are less than 300 subscribers away from 10,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button and join my Brittany Barnes Boutique Facebook group follow us on Instagram because once we hit 10,000, we are going to have a huge celebration and giveaway and you're not going to want to miss it. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you next time.